Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2020 Virtual Fall Art Show. My name is Carolyn, and I would like to welcome Professor Paul Payment, who will be interviewing two of the art show uh, painters, Stephen Hadowski and James Randall. Hey, you guys. Hi, Stephen. Hi, James. How are hello. you guys doing today? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Fine. Good. Fantastic. Nice to see you. I'm going to start off with uh, Stephen. So, Stephen, let me ask you, um, approximately at what age did you first start getting interested in art? And do you have a friend or family member that's been an inspiration? Um, well, I've always kind of been a creative soul, I guess. I mean, I, I grew up in a slightly dysfunctional blue collar family and I would uh, just go in my room and draw constantly. This is kind of like was a coping mechanism for me, I would say, to begin with. But my mom encouraged me. And then later on in high school, I had a fantastic uh, high school art teacher and I went to a high school which had a heavy focus on arts. And he, he single-handedly sort of got me into the School of Visual Arts in New York. So oh, wow. from, from there, um, it just, you know, snowballed. But honestly, I didn't really start painting until I was about 30 years old. Oh, wow. Uh, so I was in school for graphic design and media and advertising, that kind of a career. And I, and I still do that. And I've done that all along through my painting. But um, uh, yeah, if, huh, I, this, interesting. The, the mentoring of the high school art teacher was vital. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I know for a lot of us that it's such a, a critical time. Yeah. So was he the one that kind of got you into working with oil on canvas as well? Uh, he exposed us to everything. But really um, what happened was that when I, when I, I turned 30, we, we decided we we're going to get out of New York and move to California. And my wife enrolled me in a class at UCLA for painting. Oh. And I, I mean, I wanted to do it, but doing the advertising and graphic design, I just never got around to doing it. But uh, thank God she did, because here we are. You, you know. Yeah, do you think that there was something um, about that, that visual language that you have with graphic design that help translate into painting, which is also another visual language. Yeah, was I mean, there something that you had in common there? They're all outlets, right? I mean, they're all yeah. creative outlets, whether it's painting, cooking, uh, you know, graphic design, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm always doing something like that. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but the, but the simplification of my art, I think is a direct result of graphic design. I can, yeah, that, I think that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I mean, because I've worked both as a graphic designer, uh, although my intention has always been as a painter, it makes a lot of sense. I see those, those connections. There's a common visual language that we're dealing with. What about artists that might have been influential for you? Well, early on, I would say, you know, I was always influenced by um, John Singer Sargent. I was just mm -hmm. blown away by, especially if you see them in person. I grew up on the East Coast, so I had access to them at the Met in New York. And when I saw them yeah. up close in person, it was just unbelievable oil painting skills, like mad skills. And I always wanted to do something like that, but uh, I would have to say Hopper is probably my biggest influence. And I think you could see that in my work pretty easily. What, well, what would you say would be some of the things that influenced you about Hopper? Like, I mean, is there like a direct correlation or is there, uh, I mean, is it the way that you yeah, I think the it's, paint? Is it the think scenes it's that, that you that choose? Quiet stillness of the American landscape, whether it's urban, suburban. Um, you know, it's it's still very I, I try to eliminate a lot of things in my work and make them very quiet and, and streamlined. So um, his work, that loneliness that he captured so well, I think a lot of people relate to that. You know, mm -hmm. you're you're in a uh, the most, you know, affluent places in the world, but you can still feel that loneliness, you know? It's, yeah. It's, really, it's a really interesting balance. But I, and then also, also Ed Ruscha is another one of my huge, oh yeah, um, you know, things. So I, I put type on paintings from now, you know, sometimes, sometimes not, but uh, he's definitely another big influence on me. I, I definitely see both those, uh, both those artists. What about the way that, um, uh, you know, when I look at your paintings, they, they, they almost look like they're maybe not from photographs or, or I shouldn't say inspired from photographs, but, but they almost look like plein air paintings. 
you know, the way that you're applying the paint and everything, there's kind of like a freshness to them. Well, yeah, um, I would, I would say know. another thing about the graphic design training is that I have to constantly stop myself from trying to be perfect. You know, yeah. I want it to be orderly and straight and I, and I try to loosen up as much as I can, but yeah. uh, that, that is a battle for me, definitely. But um, yeah. So what about your, like, what kinds of reactions do you get to your work from your, um, you know, you, you have followers in terms of, of admirers that really like your work, but maybe yeah. perhaps also collectors as well. And what are some of the things that they um, respond to? I think, I think that um, they feel like a, a, a personal, like local connection to the art. I think they, I get a lot of, you know, that looks like the house I grew up in or that looks like the alley behind my house. And they just, they just get it, you know, they get the feeling, they know the subject matter because mainly I'm selling these at Beverly Hills Art Show, which is like, you know, mm -hmm. five minutes from where my house used to be in LA. So mm -hmm. it's like, I think they, they, they recognize the subject matter pretty much. Yeah, yeah, they, they, I think the subject matter is all very, um, uh, it, it's very approachable. It, it's, they're, they're common things, like you said, kind of like right. a hopper scene, you know, where, you know, or, or even for, uh, for that matter, Ruche, you know, these are all places that we've been, that we're in con, that we've, we've all encountered. Um, but maybe it's a way that you're giving, that there's a way that you're uh, picturing these. They don't necessarily tend to me as being sentimental, you yeah. know, and, and, um, but they're, they're fairly straightforward and fairly matter of fact, but, but you said that, but they're also very recognizable. Yeah, very you know? little nostalgic too, I would say for a lot of these houses that I'm painting and, you know, things are kind of maybe crumbling a little bit, falling apart, you know, they don't look as good as they used to, but, you know, people really, uh, you know, connect to that feeling. So. Yeah, or maybe when you're composing this, why are you making some of the choices? Like, why are you choosing this angle, like a frontal angle, rather than like something from like a three quarters point of view or a yeah, side like, angle? You know? Lately, I'm trying to make them very like stripes almost, you know, like yeah. one side to the other of the canvas. I don't know when I started doing that purposely, but I think lately I, I have definitely see that in my work that it's very uh, landscape focused with left to yeah. right you know, stripes and fill up the space. And if you look, you know, except maybe except for an alley here and there, but um, yeah, I, I work from photographs and I grid them out on the canvas. And then I, I basically, I fill them in, but I eliminate a lot of things. Like in terms of painting and becoming a painter and making that conversion to graph from graphic design into painting, like what are some of the, the most difficult things that you've had to master, you know, in terms of technique? Painting palm trees, for one thing, is a problem in California. It's not, <laughs> they're not the easiest things to I didn't take. know that it would be that difficult. <laughs> that <laughs> has been a challenge for me constantly. And also uh, just telephone wires, things like that. You just, you know, yeah. just the idea of eliminating things. I don't know if you probably have noticed in my paintings, there's no people. No. You know, there's no, no cars. There's, it's, yeah. there's quietness to them that I try to get through. And it's, I'm constantly eliminating things but it's like a process you know yeah, so, yeah absolutely on a slightly different note Stephen so on a typical day how much time do you devote to making art I don't first of all I don't paint every day I don't do it every uh -huh. day but I, I, I'll say COVID has been a boon to me I mean it's just been like non-stop painting I mean I've never worked yeah. so much in my life but um, I yeah. normally I do my I have like a routine I do in the morning you know I get up I go for a walk out here in the desert, it's beautiful. You know, there's nobody around. And then I Are go you in, in Palm pool. Desert? Yeah, Palm Desert. I go in the pool, you know, then I have lunch and then I'll paint. In the afternoon, I'll paint from like, you know, two to five, something like that. And I pretty much, I do something every day, but it's not full on painting. I do something creative every day, but it's not necessarily painting. Have you participated in any art fairs? Well, I've been in the Beverly Hills Art Show since I think 2011. I think I don't. I think I've missed maybe a few of them. So, yeah, which other art fair was it that you were in? It, in Brooklyn, I went in, oh, in Brooklyn uh, a couple of years ago, 2018 maybe. I can't remember exactly, but um, yeah, that was that was a, a a process getting the paintings across the country and everything like that. But it was fun. I mean, I'm originally from the East Coast, so I'm familiar with the area. So yeah. it, was, it wasn't that much of a unknown. But um, yeah, I had a good time. 
It was great. Oh, but no. The Beverly Hills Art Show is fantastic. I mean, I you can't even compare it to some of the other shows. For the artists, they do everything. It makes it so easy. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks. Thanks so much. And uh, sure. I think the work is is really um, it's really wonderful. It's it's beautiful and and there's kind of a fresh quality. Um, I'd really love to see it in person. Yeah, no problem. I'll be at the next show whenever that is, you know. <laughs> thanks so much, Stephen. Take All care. Right, yeah, no problem. Okay, we're going to move on to to James. So, James, when did you first start getting interested in art and were you influenced by a friend or family member or what, what's been uh, your yeah, inspiration? That's pretty easy. My dad's an artist. So um, mm -hmm. I was I was around it from as long as I can remember. You know, my mom got sick of me. I was a rambunctious kid. So she's like, Kirk, Kirk take Jamie with you to the studio. So uh -huh. I remember wearing his needed erasers in the pile of clay. And he would try and keep me occupied, give me some watercolors and help me out. But he would get annoyed and he would draw all over it because my dad's a perfectionist. But it was like just that idea of being creative, you know, and my dad kind of gave me that freedom to do what I wanted to do. So what, what kind of work does he do? He started off as like a worshiper of Andrew and Jamie and NCYS, you know, so he was doing gouaches that were like every, every hair on every sweater, every brick in every building. And I would say they started off pretty dark in the 70s, but they got a little happier. And so they kind of got away from that Andrew Wyeth. I guess maybe out in the West, it wasn't as accessible in the 70s and 80s as, you know, some of the darker yeah. stuff that Wyeth was doing. Was it egg tempera? Like, uh, like no, the Wyeth? He, well, that's funny. He started off just doing watercolor, like tradi very traditional watercolor. And then he moved on to, um, he started taking the paint directly out of the paint tube and painting it. And as you know, watercolors don't have a lot of binder. Yeah. So they started cracking off the painting. But I actually heard a lecture with, um, Jamie Wyeth in Salt Lake City. He started doing that with uh, watercolor and adding honey as a binder. Oh, wow. I've never heard of that. But well, it, it kind of makes sense. A, he was also painting on cardboard, which wasn't necessarily archival. So <laughs> yeah. I, they were, I don't think they were meant to withstand the test of time. Yeah, I guess not. So uh, so you, you're painting on panel, is that correct? On wood panel? My smaller paintings are on panel. Um, with it gets smaller, you can see, um, you, you paint on panel too, I noticed. Um, yeah, yeah. You get that surface so fine, so when you're using those smaller brushes, the paint just kind of goes on a little bit smoother and yeah. um, the detail holds up a little bit more and isn't, isn't stip stippling of the canvas isn't distracting from the, from the, the technique. Yeah, ab absolutely. And how large are, are a lot of your images, your paintings? Um, I, Can you I, tell I, us a little bit about the size? You know, I go from eight by 10 inches all the way up to the largest painting I've ever done was um, 10 feet tall by eight feet wide. Wow. 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 Dude. And, yeah. and so how long do those take you if to do a painting that size? Because you're working so detailed. Like right. how long does a painting like that take? Depends on how focused I am. Yeah. You know, focus is a big issue. So the painting behind me now is, um, I hope I'm not shouting. Is uh, sixty no. by forty? Is sixty by forty? And oh, that's I've good size, that yeah. For, you know, I always say this to people who are casual um, viewers of my artwork. You know, so I've probably been on this painting for three and a half to four weeks. Uh -huh. um, and people are like, well, that doesn't seem very long. And I say, well, yeah. this is my full time job. And kind of to go back to the question that you asked, Stephen, you know, I'm painting. I yeah. paint every my job. My uh, my partner, she. Uh, she, 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 she's a hard worker. So I think she expects the same from me. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's something about the work ethic, I think of um, like when you're doing this, this type of work, you have to be really dedicated. It's, it's time consuming work, you know? I, I mean, besides just being in the studio, you've got to go out and you've got to create imagery, you know? I mean, there's a lot that goes into it than, than just merely going at, going into the studio. There's, all kinds of ancillary activities that, that have to take place. So absolutely as a full-time artist, I mean you have like your you know, sometimes it'll take me two weeks to pick an image. I'm sure your paintings take a very long time yeah. as well. Yeah. If you're if you're going to spend a month or six weeks on a painting, you're married to that image. So you need to make oh, sure yeah. that you get that composition the way you want it to be. Yeah. And you can't you can't afford to get three weeks into a painting and be like, this composition just isn't working. I mean it's gonna happen. Right. You, you you save yourself a lot of uh, stress on your heart by uh, by uh, getting getting it right before and like laying the groundwork and getting the blueprint blueprint correct. 
Well, absolutely. And you know, that kind of leads me into my next question. How do you select the images that you're selecting? Why this one and not the, the 99 other, you know, photos that you, that you took at that same moment? What is it about this one and not the other ones? You know, sometimes it's just, you know, when you have the right image, you like the, the light, the reflected light, um, the composition, you're just like, it might not be something that you thought you were going to paint, but it just, you, you, you have your canvas size and you just know. Um, yeah. It, it's the way that everything lines up and you start laying it out on your sketches and you're just, you're just like this composition is going to work for me. So am I correct in assuming that you, when you go out to these locations and you're, you're imaging, uh, you're composing, do you take a hundred photos here? Oh yeah, that's the luxury from? of an iPhone. You know, yeah. it, you can take, you can take a hundred bad photos and it's no skin off your back, you know, and you can actually get great images. But at the same time, I, I'm not always a hundred percent married to my image. I'm using my image for um, composition. Cause if you start getting yeah. married, but you, you start trying to copy every detail of the photograph, you know, sometimes right. it's better if you have a, just an okay reference because it leaves things out and it kind of shows you where you can leave things out or where you can be a little more inventive. Yeah. You know, when we were looking at Stevens, I think um, Stevens um, have a, a, I was going to use the term uh, somber, but mm -hmm. maybe, maybe that's not the word. Maybe it's like his are a little quieter than yours. That's I mean, exactly what I, that's exactly what I was going to say. There was, as he said too, with like not having um, humans or cars in there, but there's still the, um, he's still alluding to a human presence, but it is like quiet. It doesn't feel like a zombie apocalypse quiet, but there's like right. a illness that's really wonderful. Another thing that kind of strikes me about these is that like a lot of things that become the focus of your paintings are, are, um, are kind of nostalgic. They harken back to an era. There's maybe things that have survived, you know, um, whether it's going to be a sign, you know, the, the motel sign or, or whether it's the Airstream trailer in there, mm -hmm. you know, like, is there, is there something about these, you know, they're, they're clearly Americana yes. in them, you know, and, and I think in that, in that way, they're maybe a slightly different from, from Stevens too, because Stevens are like very Southern California, you know, right. those, I, I'm, I'm from the Midwest. So when I see those houses, to me, those scream of like Southern California. Absolutely, yours, the, light, the light too. And, uh, absolutely, and and the light could be that. Uh, and with yours, you know, I mean, they're slightly different. I mean, to me, the the shift is slightly more towards Americana, that era that that everybody loves, you know, and marketing loves to to hype up Route sixty six, you know, and it's always been part culture of our that, culture. That, yeah, I think it's yeah. you're right, you're right. But uh, I, you know, there is that romanticism, but I also like. Um, you know, seeing how these things are today, you know, so it's not like mm -hmm. making this like beautiful image of, hey, this is, a, this is 1955, you know, for instance, the painting we're looking at, there's a dumpster, no. cars are a little more, and the sign burned out. So a lot of those things right. are decaying, decaying. And, you know, if you look at some more of my paintings on my website, you'll see like windows might be broken out, or part of a um, gas station um, awning has fallen in. But I love, I mean, I feel like I was the last generation of, of road trips. You know, my ah, parents, interesting. my parents, uh -huh. 40 years old, my parents never flew anywhere. So we got in the car, and we drove mainly to my dad's art shows. And I remember that feeling of stopping at a gas station or stopping at a hotel and going swimming and like, because you were in, you have a bunch of five year old kids in your car and we're getting car sick or screaming and yelling. And like, you can, I feel like we were that last generation that like actually enjoyed a road trip and appreciated it. Have you ever driven to, um, like a perfect example is in between Palm Springs or Palm Desert in Phoenix. There's like, oh, yeah. out yeah. in the desert, you'll see these little gas stations that are just, there. there's no use for them anymore. Cars can go 400 yeah. miles without people changing gas, changing, getting a fuel, refueling, you know? And it's, yeah. it's just, it, it's a different way even in cars. I mean, if you were driving in a Galaxy 500 with your, with your parents, you were stopping every hour and a half. Like there might not have been air conditioning. There might not have, you know, the, the, there wasn't as much music. So you had to let people get out and the cars probably needed to change gas or refuel every, you know, 150 miles. Yeah. And now cars yeah. just go stop at like a super gas station that's got a Wendy's and a Burger King in it, you know? 
Yeah. yeah. How do you feel like your audience responds to your work? Is it because there's that familiarity <laughs> to the subject matter or like what, what things do they respond to? I think that the same thing with Steven, um, it might be something that just reminds them of a place, you know, um, mm -hmm. it'd be like, Hey, this painting we're looking at now, they might say, Oh my God, that reminds me of my grand, like there was this guy who had a junkyard behind my grandma's house and I used to run around and chase cats. I'm creating something that, you know, here's my moment, but I'm not trying to force like what I was feeling when I painted that. So anyone can react any way. Someone might see a van with graffiti and be like, cities are getting destroyed, I hate it. Whereas I see like that decay of cities is wonderful. And like, it's a free art show. You go out and there's vans covered in amazing artwork. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's kind of interesting because, you know, as artists, we're always kind of trying to juggle, you know, like making, making a living and also making art, you know, and, um, you know, Stephen, Stephen's worked as a graphic designer, but you said that you haven't worked, like you've been only a painter for your entire career. Like, you know, right out of college, I had a few lucky breaks and was able to make some money where I didn't have to really work full time. I had a gallery that came to me and they liked my work and they, they bought all the paintings outright for nothing. But I mean, it was still like when you're, when you're 21 years old, and someone writes you a check for $4,500. You're like, give it to me. Yeah. Hey, it's, it's, 2000, That's it's 2001. I got $4,500. I don't think I ever have to work again. Right. Exactly. That's incredible. I was, I was stupid, but you know, I, I did have to do for probably like three or four years, the, you know, work until five, five o'clock and then paint until two or three in the morning. Right. Yeah. And so are do are do you normally work during the day? Yeah, I do. Like I said, my, my partner, she's got a, a pretty busy work schedule and we, we like to come together at the end of the day and have dinner together and cook and, and have a conversation. So um, I try to keep like pretty much nine to five hours ish, you know, and mm -hmm. I find I feel like if I'm in the studio for eight to nine hours a day, I feel like I can at least get four to four and a half good hours of painting, you know, like just because yeah. you're, in the studio and you're like, it's, it's hard for me to walk in the studio and just go right to the palette and start mixing color. Right. And, and are you, do you work like, um, do you work on a number of paintings at once or do you work kind of like in a serial fashion or, or how does that, how do I, you usually One work? at a time. Yeah, I've tried that, yeah. but you know, you see that painting that's got unresolved issues out of the corner of your eye and you're like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I got to solve that. A question for Steven. Yeah. I met up with him when I resided in the Crestview neighborhood in LA. Is that oh, yeah. you when you said you lived about five minutes from where the Beverly Hills Art Show is? Right. And I think you might have depicted the Crestview scenes. Can you tell us if so, what happened to them? Like, did you sell them? Are they in a library or do you still have them? No, I still have quite a few of them. As a matter of fact, the, one of the paintings that we're showing here, that pink house is just down the street from where I used to live in Crestview. So that pink house is a new painting and um, it's it's definitely in the Crestview neighborhood. It's just a little south of Crestview. Cool. Wow. On South yeah. Halm, H-A-L-M. Nice. That's the name of the street. So, but yeah, no, I, I, I did many, many paintings of Crestview. They have some good beat up alleys. I'll say that for them. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, we also have one question for for James, uh, how has it been for you during COVID? Are things similar or do you depend on art fairs? Are you painting more? Um, luckily, my gallery really came through for me. They had a gangbusters year. Um, what, what good, is the, which gallery? I show at a gallery called Trove in Park City, Utah. Oh, and great, I have a great relationship with the owner. Um, Park City um, is, is booming, partially because of COVID. People want yeah. to get out of New York City. They right. want to get out. Of LA. And you, when you, I don't know if you've ever been to Park City, Utah. It's not like LA where you spend $2 million and you get a thousand square feet. Like you spend $2 million in LA, you're going to get 6,000 square feet. Yeah. You know, so people have wall space and they want to spend their money. And, you know, people have been calling me like, what do you have? What do you have? So my collectors have really come through for me. Mm -hmm. I, I got a little unmotivated, you know, like the first couple of weeks of COVID. And it was just like the whole world was just in chaos. And I was, I allowed myself to get a little too distracted. James, we have a question from um, Margaret, Margaret, um, who just happens to be one of my students. Oh, and awesome. She, yeah, she's, she's interested in the reflection in your Airstream. Can you talk a little bit about how you would achieve something like the, the reflection? Well, I'm sure your, your teacher here would probably hopefully say the same thing. I don't want to contradict him. But oh, the most- Go right ahead. 
the most important thing is um, trust your eye and paint what you see. Um, mm -hmm. Stay away from what you know and what you think you're you thinking. You know, you, you don't take out, you're not gonna take out a tube of silver paint to paint something silver. If you look at the blue in there, it's the sky color. So you keep your palette consistent and you tr trust your eye. If you look at that and you, you, you trust your eye, you will get a, you'll get an accurate description. And also same with like reflected light and shadows, you know, it's like so important, not just to think of the shadow as one color, you know, you get warms and cools. So you just have to trust your eye. Definitely. Um, you're making my, my job a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that answers your question. You know, it is, yeah. it is, it is, people are like, whoa, you know, it's always like the star yeah. of my, get me out of here. <laughs> well, we, super, we like they're shiny things. Yeah. They're so yeah. fun to work on. And, it, and they're actually, the thing that I like about an Airstream is you get the metal that's contouring a, this form, but then the metal's also very thin, so it kind of undulates. So the distortions that you get in it are very interesting. And it's almost fun because it doesn't have to be completely accurate because it is a distorted yeah. reflection, like a funhouse mirror. Yeah, yeah. It, it almost looks like a giant toaster. Yeah, it's awesome. That's, I mean, everyone like those weird, like Airstreams and Spartans, yeah. it's, it's super fun. Yeah, these are beautiful. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing both your paintings in person. Absolutely. I, I, know, would like, like, I would like to see see people see my work in person. Yeah, that's <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. James, I, have you been in the Beverly Hills Art Show before? Uh, Steven's an old vet. What about you? Oh, gosh. I think Karen would have to get back to me on that one. Uh, I think I've done it since 2013. So oh, I started wow. off just doing it in the spring. Just because I'm not very prolific, it's hard for me. Like, if you've been to my booth before, I very rarely have more than, like, maybe eight or nine originals. Yeah. Oh, Bigger. Wow. But a lot of small ones. People like the smaller paintings. And I really yeah. love those eight by ten paintings because it's a really fun way to work out ideas and compositions. Mm -hmm. And um, you're not as committed to them. And they're just great. People can hang them anywhere. And then I have prints or yeah. whatever. But people love to buy at the street shows. But yeah, I would say I, I used to only do it in the spring. And then I started doing it in the fall last year. And I was going to do it again this fall. But obviously, yeah. here we are. Um, yeah. So I've probably done it right. like eight, eight or nine times. Yeah. If, so if... Um, if people are, are interested in purchasing your work, both Stephen and James, like where would they go? Um, well, for, me, for me, you can go to stevearts.com. Yeah, that's the best place to get it is just Steve, S-T-E-V-E-A-R-T-S.com right there. And you can just message me directly from there. No problem. Awesome. And James, what about you? Do, do, do they have to go... Uh, through the gallery in in Park City, or can no? They... I, well, if, if if I have something available, but if they see something they like and they have the gallery has it available, obviously it has to be purchased through the gallery. Um, my Absolutely. website through me. Um, I respond to my Instagram pretty pretty rapidly. Um, it's a great platform. It's instant. It's not clunky. Yeah. Um, it's a good way to communicate with other people. You guys, thanks so much, and it's been oh, yeah. such a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Likewise.